I am trying to be better. Do not make me let you down. Magneto's new costume in X-Men 97 isn't just a fashion choice. It's a window into the show's narrative. As the master of magnetism, he's always been a force to be reckoned with, but his updated look hints at deeper layers to the story. From the sleek design to the symbolic colors, every element speaks volume about the character's secret objectives. What's the significance behind Magneto's costume in X-Men 97? Without further ado, let me welcome you to the Cypunk feed. Magneto's bold look in X-Men 97 isn't just a fashion statement. It's a declaration of power and purpose that speaks volumes about the upcoming series. As the master of magnetism, the prince of polarity, and the mangler of metal, Magneto has always embodied strength and sophistication. But with this revamped costume, he's taking his iconic style to a whole new level. A sleeveless shirt adorned with a striking M down the front, paired with the matching cape, sleek spandex, gloves, and boots. It's a look that screams confidence and command, befitting a mutant of Magneto's caliber. While mere mortals might struggle to pull off such a daring ensemble, Magneto effortlessly owns it with the swagger of a true style god. But there's more to Magneto's makeover than meets the eye. Behind the flashy exterior lies her deeper symbolism, hinting at the journey that awaits in X-Men 97. As Magneto strides onto the screen in his revamped attire, he's signaling a shift in the dynamics of power and allegiance within the mutant world. His attire isn't just about fashion, it's about staking his claim as a force to be reckoned with, a leader whose influence will shape the course of events to come. So, while the internet may be ablaze with chatter about Magneto's striking new look, what surprised so many people was the first look at Magneto's redesigned costume. Instead of the intimidating crimson and purple helmet, cloak, and bodysuit, he's wearing a much more heroic costume. That, my friends is exactly the point, because Magneto is not the villain, but the hero of X-Men 97. To understand the implications of Magneto's new costume, you have to understand where the show left off. In the finale of X-Men's fifth season, Charles Xavier had been attacked on national television, and he was dying from the psychic assault. His only chance at survival was for Lalandra to get him treated by her people within the Shi'ar Empire. The catch was that Xavier would live but only if he remained with the Shi'ar. The ending left the X-Men without their namesake and leader. In the episode's closing scene, we see them standing alongside Magneto, who had come to see his old friend. It left fans with no closure until now. Marvel announced that X-Men 97 was already getting a second season, which is meant to feel like season 6 and 7 of the 1992 original. It'll pick up where X-Men the Animated Series left off, with Magneto standing with the X-Men and that is why he has a new costume. With Xavier clinging to life in space and the X-Men turning to Magneto, this is the perfect costume for Eric Lenscher, created by the legendary artist John Romita Jr. Magneto first wore the suit in 1985's Uncanny X-Men number 200. At this time, Claremont took the villain on a new route by having him join the X-Men and soon thereafter assuming the role of headmaster at Xavier's School of Gifted Youngsters. To commemorate the occasion, he sported a new look that showed off his ripped arms and an excessively large letter M on the chest. The ensemble is complete with evening gloves that were fashionable for the time. It wasn't the happiest of occasions. At the same time that he rocked a new look, he was being captured by Freedom Force. The government-sponsored villains had apprehended Magneto and thus began the trial of Magneto. This was all foretold in Marvel Comics last year, when the editorial staff dusted off the concept for another round of the trial of Magneto, who was accused of murdering Scarlet Witch in an unforgettable story. As the 85 story goes, Magneto's heroic ascent began with Secret Wars. When the Beyonder abducted the heroes and villains of Earth-616, the all-powerful cosmic god sorted his living action figures into two piles, heroes and villains, naturally. It was a revelatory moment of Magneto, as he was placed with the heroes because the Beyonder saw that M's goals were selfless, since he wanted to protect mutant kind. When they all returned to Earth, it made Magneto rethink his choices. In the end, he joined the X-Men and became the school's headmaster. That's when he got a new suit to mark the change in character. Let's start with the first Blue X-Man, Henry Hank McCoy, also known as The Beast. When Dr. McCoy joined the X-Men, he wasn't furry and blue. In his initial stages of mutation, Beast had larger than average human arms and legs, had his limbs covered in hair, but he still had the appearance of a human. A really big human. All of that changed in issue 11 of The Amazing Adventures in 1972. Beast mutated further after he drank a formula. This formula caused Hank to morph into an animalistic creature that gave him distinct dark grey skin and fur. Eventually, Hank's fur would change to blue. Although the comic book artist's original intent was to make Beast's fur look black, the ink they used to colour the comic looked blue in hue. So, the guys at Marvel decided to keep the Beast's fur the iconic azure colour. Hank's formula for achieving his animalistic appearance accidentally contributed to his appearance in the X-Men Fox Cinematic Universe, with Mystique ultimately being responsible for turning him blue. 
In X-Men First Class, Hank believed Mystique's genetic makeup could have been the key to making mutants look normal. He saw it as a potential cure for Mystique, but she didn't take the cure. So, Hank injected himself with it, and he emerged looking like a true beast. After Beast's transformation, more Blue Mutants were introduced. This particular mutant is very important as to why Blue is such a predominant colour for the X-Men. The teleporter Nightcrawler's hereditary explains his colour. Writer Scott Lobdell proved Nightcrawler was Mystique's son in X-Men Unlimited issue 4, although the original plan was to reveal Mystique as Nightcrawler's father and Destiny as Nightcrawler's mother. Blue is rarely found on living creatures that aren't aquatic. Blue is also one of only two colours not found in human skin tone. Jack Kirby used blue as a visual shorthand for non-human characters to make them stand out visually, communicate their inhuman nature to the reader. A visual shorthand is a shot, or series of shots, at the beginning of a film, an episode, or even at the beginning of a scene that gives the viewer a wealth of information without them having to think very much about it. It can tell us where the story takes place, the time of year, the weather, and the hereditary of Nightcrawler's blue skin. In the comics, Nightcrawler is the son of Mystique and Azazel, the latter of whom is a demonic warlord. Nightcrawler inherited his father's demonic look and Mystique passed down her blue skin to him. Intriguingly, Nightcrawler's mother's skin is blue. Born Raven Darkhome, Mystique is a shapeshifter. She can look like anyone she wants to, which is quite practical in stealthy situations. Her natural blue form makes her stand out from most of the Brotherhood of Mutants. As for why Mystique is blue, it is simply narrowed down to her genetics. Very little is known about her past in the comics, so it's unclear if Mystique's parents were humans or mutants, though in the movies it was implied that they were human and that they tried to kill her. Either way, she was born blue, and her shape-shifting abilities awakened when she was a preteen. She's a character who fights for a world where she doesn't have to hide her true self, to live a normal life. Mystique also ages slower than humans and most mutants, so she has plenty of time to fight for mutant equality, or superiority, depending on whose side she's on at any given time. While these examples are suitable for the understanding of the frequent use of blue-coloured mutants within the X-Men comic, there is still one major reason, or should I say very interesting trickery, and it's been hiding under your nose this whole time. In comics, blue mutants serve another, more practical purpose. Before digital printing techniques, comic books were primarily made with four colours, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. A combination of these four colours and white paper could be used to trick the eye into seeing a wide variety of colours. But to save time and money, artists would often use one of the above colours as a solid. Cyan was a stand-in for blue and magenta for red, hence the perceived overuse of the colour. In the comics, Apocalypse's blue lips are his standout feature, as his skin is usually grey. For the character's theatrical debut in X-Men Apocalypse, however, he was changed to be a navy shade of blue. Continuity-wise, we can attribute this to another case of genetics, but it's unclear why the film crew changed Apocalypse's skin colour. Perhaps they just felt that blue popped on the screen better than grey. At least it's better than purple, which is what Oscar Isaac's Apocalypse looked like in the first photos of his character published on the internet. Since digital printing is the norm nowadays, blue remains an excellent way to tell the fan base that the character in front of them is not human. Magneto's transition to a hero and leader in X-Men 97, as reflected in his comic book inspired costume, sets the stage for thrilling story arcs. It's likely that the show will explore adaptations of iconic comic events like the trial of Magneto, while inevitable conflicts between Magneto and Xavier loom on the horizon. The journey promises to be captivating and full of twists and turns. So do you like Magneto's new style? Leave a comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe for more theories and info. This has been your host. Let me welcome you to the Cypunk feed.